Griddle Master. Cooking up the good stuff. Hey, Griddle Master Joe here with you. I wanted to introduce you, those of you who don't know what Griddle Master is and what makes us so unique, is we are a company that makes griddle tops for barbecues and for stove tops. So, a typical grill, a typical grill will have grates and you cannot cook fried rice, you could not uh, cook shrimp or scrambled eggs or anything like that. I could keep going on and on and on and on. So I had five years ago, uh, we are in 2018 now, uh, five years ago, I actually more like nine years ago, I had the idea, I wanted to do like Benihana at home. I don't want to pay those crazy prices. Uh, I would rather do it at home. So I kept pursuing, pursuing uh, how I could do that. I'm going to go ahead and put this down. And so we were in Sam's Club uh, back, like I said, five years ago, and I saw this grill. This is called the 8 Burner Event Grill. This is actually 52 inches wide by 19 and a half inches deep and I just fell in love with it. I told the wife right then and there I am going to do it. We are going to start this business of making griddle tops for the barbecue. So anyway I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. Understand that I don't have the grates. I have never cooked on the grates anymore. From that day, I have not cooked on grates ever again, because I can cook everything that I want on the griddle top, and probably nine out of ten times even better. Uh, there could be a couple of things. Uh, you may have charcoal, the flavor of charcoal, but there are ways to do things to get really good flavor, but we call our griddle tops for your barbecue the fountain of youth for your barbecue because nothing drips down causing it to rust and corrode. As you know if you have had and do have a barbecue with grates, the insides will rust out, corrode, uh, you're forever cleaning. Well, I have had my grill for over five years and it's like brand new inside because again nothing drips down on it so I have this product called a G Shield that helps keep all the humid air and everything off of it and it just goes over top I'm gonna set that to the side but here is my griddle top so as you can see we have a gap here and we have a gap here you have to have a gap so that the heat could escape. Because remember, your grill was made for the grates where the heat would come up and go out. So we cannot go full width. So when you measure for us to custom make you a griddle top for your grill, you have to measure. And then because this is so wide, we do two inches into it. This is a four foot griddle top here, 48 inches. But you may only have to take two inches off your width. If you are under like 33 inches, 32 inches, you could just deduct two inches from that width and let us make you a top so you just have an inch open and an inch open on each side for the heat to escape. So we're gonna show you some uh, action shots through me talking and as I explain, I don't wanna take too much time, I just really want I get a lot of calls and I try to take the time with anyone who calls to explain the product and, and how you could use it. By the time I'm done, people are really, really excited to get a griddle top in. So I'm hoping to be able to accomplish this for you in this video. If you'll take the time to watch it, I think it'll be very informative for you and uh, you will 
get a better understanding of everything. So, you've measured the, the, the size that you need. It comes in. When you get it, it's going to look freckly. It's going to look polka dotted. Because we put reinforcements underneath and they get welded on. While it's steel, when you weld, you have the weld marks on the other side as well. But as you look at my griddle top right now, and I think I cooked on this two days ago. So this is how it looks when I take it off. And it's black. It's black as light. That is called a seasoning. You will season like you would a cast iron skillet. And so as you can see, there's little oil marks and stuff because when you're done cooking, you clean it with just water. You scrape off any food and, and anything that has uh, cooked onto it. You scrape that off, you wipe it down, and then you re-oil it up. So that way you're protecting, keeping the surface from the humidity that can help oxidize or cause it to oxidize. So with the seasoning and the oil, it protects the griddle top. And then you close your lid down, as you saw when we started this video, and that's how it stays. And I'm in South Florida right now. It's morning time and I'm already sweating just standing out here talking to you all. So the humidity is always crazy here. But anyway, so you have your griddle top. We've seasoned it and all that is is we take and we put flax oil real thin. You dip it and you rub it on and you put your grill on low to medium and it's going to start turning black and, and cook on and, and, and adhere to your griddle top. I will interject something here. Uh, we've had a few people that have called that in some areas their seasoning may flake off and then they try to season it and it flakes off and just in random what usually it's just uh, and I say usually for the people that call it's usually just one area but I did have a guy that called uh, a couple weeks ago and he also sent me a, a, a picture and he had two and another one in an another area so I don't know if it wasn't cleaned well enough when you get it because when you receive your griddle top it has uh, machine oil from the, the factory and you need to you need to get soap and water or Brillo or there's also another another thing. Yeah, it's see I I've used it. It's like a brick, but it's it's like sandpaper and it's a grill stone. And you could get that at Lowe's or Home Depot or something like that. A grill stone. And I like to scrape that on before I season it. I will scrape it and it's like sandpaper, so therefore it will it will scratch up your griddle top. And that's a good thing because when you put the oil, the flax oil on there, and again, it's super thin. It's just, it's just a film that you put on, not a coat. The flax oil, it will go inside those, those scratches and it will help adhere. So if, if, for those of you that already have a Griddle Master Griddle Top, if you have any flaking, all you have to do is either take a little bit of sandpaper and scratch it up and then season it and it will grab right to that. So I'll move on from there. So we have our griddle top. As I was starting to start the business and I'm cooking and I would feel the heat. Uh, if, if you let your hand come over here, because the heat is escaping, I was like, you know what? We could take one of these aluminum pans and if we take it and put it out over top of that, we have a convection oven. That heat is coming up and then going out. Or I could go long ways and do a longer area. We have, so we have where we could barbecue, we could cook our meal on, on, a, on a griddle top. And we could bake biscuits. We could... Hold on, let me get something else. Um, 
we could put a cooling rack down so that way we're not burning the bottom because the flame is coming up and hitting the steel. So here, a convection oven, what is a convection oven? It takes and it blows air around and it circulates the air. Well, if we were down on the griddle top with our, our meat or, or chicken or whatever we're cooking, it, it would just burn the bottom if we kept it for any long periods of time. So we put a cooling rack down. I could put biscuits on here and then I could cover them up. And now it's circulating and baking. So I was like, whoa, that's awesome. And I tried it the first time and I burned them. <laughs> yes, I did. And you can watch the video. The first video I, I did biscuits on was the um, KFC uh, biscuits and gravy for breakfast, I think it was. So you can see that. but. But the simple solution was, understand that the heat's coming up and it's, it's coming around. So the biscuits that were in the first row right here, was get, it was getting smacked with that, that high heat all the time. So what you have to do is, number one, I had to learn, okay, I need to per, put the, only one burner on, and, because this has eight burners here, I only need one burner on. So I'm only capturing a little bit of heat that's coming up and through, and it worked beautifully. And halfway through, all I had to do is rotate my cooling rack, just rotate it, so now there's another set of biscuits up front. So that proposed another uh, issue for me initially was, as I put this on there, if any of you have touched aluminum, uh, that is heated up with fire, <laughs> you know that this is extremely hot within seconds of being put on here. So for me to do that, to, to get it to come off, I would have to take something like this, flip it up, get a towel, grab it just to check, and then try to put it back and, and not burn myself. So, being a thinker, uh, and it actually originated, I'm, I'm talking about this, but it really originated with a bowl. And you can watch that video from Griddle Master Junior Junior. My son did a, a really good video explaining how it really and truly came about. Is I wanted to do vegetables. Mrs. Griddle Master would cook up some broccoli or um, cut up some broccoli and bring it out to me in the bowl. And then I would flip it and put it down. And again, with the heat, it was hard to lift it up and put it down, lift it up and put it down. And so I wanted to put a hole in the bowl and put a wooden knob on there so I had a handle. Well, Mrs. Griddle Master, and I had big bowls and expensive bowls that I wanted to do it to, and Mrs. Griddle Master said we weren't having any of that, and so she won. Yep, she won. But I came up with a solution that is... Awesome. That solution is called Handle It. Handle It is a wooden handle with a very, very strong magnet. And so stainless steel is not magnetic. So it won't work and neither is aluminum. So it, it comes with the handle, it comes with the wooden knob, the magnet and a steel washer that you put on the underneath side and voila, now you have a handle. When you're done with it, you can put it off to the side, tilt it up, let the magnet or the, the washer fall, let it cool off a little bit, then you could grab it and you could take your product and put it right back in the bowl and serve it. So all without damaging the bowl, and now the bowl is still a bowl which is a good thing because it makes Mrs. Griddle Master happy. And it keeps me out of the doghouse. So it also works for this. So you put the steel washer on and you just set this in there. And now you have a handle on this and you put it off to the side. Now, in the last year, 
I said, I started using this a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And I had more area that I wanted to cook bigger things. I wanted to cook a big pizza. And I wanted to occupy, like I could sear the steaks and then put the steaks on the, on the cooling rack and let's bake them the last little bit. So this wasn't working for me to my liking for the amount of product that, the, that I wanted to have on the griddle top. So what did I do? I took two of them and I just riveted, I cut, I cut off the side and I was able to do two. So now look how much room I have in being able to do convection oven. I got a bigger convection oven, so I made two. So I could do two, and I still have an area, a smaller area, but I could move this over if I needed more. I could be keeping things warm or, or cooking things and still have the griddle top area. So that's what I did for for these. So I just wanted to share some of the benefits and now I want to answer just a couple of questions that people ask a lot of. So the number one question is what do you do with the grease? What do you do with the grease? So if we're doing bacon and we have grease in here, all of our corners are welded up so the grease cannot get out. So when you cook on a griddle top, you use an elongated flipper. And we have a video that you could go to where I did two big packages of bacon and I had all that grease. And within about a minute, you have a bowl and you just scoop, you scoop and go in the bowl, scoop in the bowl. And like I said, about a minute, you could, I, I kept a running clock to show you. We didn't tamper with it. It's, I am all about giving you guys real information. That's why I put burnt product that I have messed up on, so that way you don't do it. But anyway, so that's how you get the grease out, just by, and we'll put a link down in the notes or in the description of this video where you could click it and see that video. Um, you'll see, we'll put where we do pizzas, we do chicken wings. The benefit of chicken, if you've ever barbecued chicken, you know you better keep a squirt bottle of water because it's all that grease, all that fat is going to burn off and cause flare-ups. Here, no flare-ups. You can put all the chicken on here and it will just cook and it will cook evenly because again going back to a grate if this is the grate that you're cooking on currently flame is coming up from down here and coming up from over here and you have different depending on how big your grill is well if I put a steak here and the flames here how much heat is actually hitting the steak here where as a griddle top and this is all steel and flame is coming up, the, the, the heat hits it and rolls and then finally exits. It hits and rolls, so our griddle top is extremely um, consistent in temperature. And so that's because we are setting down in your grill. There are some griddles out there on the market, I won't mention their names, but they're setting up and the, and the heat can leave from all 360 degrees and those griddles, I have tested them, you will have literally a hundred degree, up to a hundred degree difference from the left and right side compared to the middle. So that's fine, but you have to learn to cook and understand that if you're doing the whole thing of steaks, you better be moving those steaks all around, otherwise you're going to have all different temperatures. So, and you're going to have to cook on high to be able to really sear something. Where here, if you watch my videos, you will see, I, I'm always telling you, low is the way to go. Even on low, 
on this grill on all the way max low I will reach temperatures between 4 and 450 degrees on this griddle top, on low. So what does that mean? It means I'm saving money in propane because I am not going through the propane at a, a crazy, compared to having it on high a majority of the time that I cook. And if my griddle top is consistent in temperature, and what I mean by consistent, I'm talking within 20 degrees all the way across the griddle top. Now I don't have to worry about keeping track of, okay, I had this one in the middle and it's cooking a lot faster than this one over here, I gotta move this, and, and anyway, it's just a much more enjoyable thing. And we custom make it, it's made in the USA, and manufactured in the USA, and we ship it out to you and most of the times, unless it's the summertime where everyone from up north is thinking about grilling and we get tons of orders that way, uh, then we get backed up where it could take up to two weeks for you to get your top. Uh, we try to get them out, you know, within five, five to ten business days. And uh, like right now, uh, we, we're getting them out within three business days, so I know we've made a lot of people happy that way. Some of you have placed orders, and we've gotten them out the next day. So, anyway, it's all depending on how many orders we have in the hopper at the time. So this is the Griddle Master Griddle Top. That's what we do. We, we also sell the products. You can get the, the flippers. You can get the, the handle it, which is my product. I came up with that. Uh, fantastic, fantastic. We use it for, for steaming vegetables. We use it for, like I said, using this to create our convection oven. There's The wife even uses it in the kitchen when she's doing her double boiler and wants a lid on something. She'll take and put it on, on the bowl or use bigger uh, bowls and again, it puts a handle on, on anything uh, bowl related. So anyway, that's it. I wanted to think if there was any other big questions that people ask, you know, the grease. Uh, what about if you're cooking hamburgers? Or, and I'm using that as a reference and you have some stuff. There's some of the grills have where a little trough that you slide this stuff down and put it in a, in a garbage. Now you have to clean that. You have to clean the container, the contraption here. You're just scraping, and, and what I tell people is you just have a bowl like this. You just keep it on the side, so I'm cooking, I'm breathing, I'm doing whatever, oh, in the bowl, and I, look at that, I, I just did it. Now, when I'm done cooking, I just take this over to the trash, wipe it in the trash, wash the bowl. I don't have a whole contraption of things to clean out, so having nowhere for the grease to go, per se, it's not an issue. In five years, it's not been an issue, not even once for me. I can even deep fry on the griddle top. Put a frying pan on here. I could put these burners on high, and I could get this up to 350 degrees. We have a video for that. We did seafood chimichangas. So look for that, seafood chimichangas. We'll put a link in the description for that one. We'll put a link of some of the videos so that way you can see all the different kinds of omelets. When I do omelets, you put the, just have a bowl of, of beaten eggs and you just throw them on there, put the topping, flip, 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 and you're done. I have a video for that. Quesadillas, fajitas, you name it, we could do it on the griddle master griddle top. So therefore, you will never go back to your grates once you start cooking on this. And then you could also explain to your spouse that it's going to help the grill to last indefinitely. If you get a brand new grill, you are crazy not to get a griddle top for it, made for it, before you cook anything on there. Because, like I said, as long as nothing has dripped down, it's not going to rust and corrode for years and years and years and years. So I'm expecting this grill to last at least 15 years, minimal because we're already five years into it and it looked brand new inside. So there could be a little bit of lifting, 
especially for the big tops like this, there could be some lifting where what you don't want to do ever, and it's with any, even your frying pans, what, what is on every frying pan? Do not submerge in water when it's really, really hot. Why? Because it's steel. It wants to react. It wants to, uh, as you heat it up, it, 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 it expands. And when you put water on there or something, a total difference in temperature, it's going to retract. Well, when you have something really long and wide, different shape, it is going to want to react. How it reacts, it's all different ways. So the wider the grill that you have, we recommend, and especially if you're doing big events, catering, and you don't want to wait, you want to just use and abuse your griddle top, we recommend you lock it down. And what do I mean by lock it down? If you look here, uh, you can see I have a, a, a screw here, a screw here, a screw here, here, and here. This grill is locked to my grill. This griddle is locked to my grill. And so therefore, it cannot lift, it cannot twist, it cannot do anything. And again, it's more common with the bigger ones, unless you... It has been my experience in five years, and anything and everything that I have seen, the, the sure way to get this thing to lift is by getting it real hot. And what I mean by real hot, if you get this to 400 plus degrees, and then you put a whole bunch of cold food on it, all at once is, you know, relatively fast, that steel is going to want to react. So, most of the time you let your food, and it's recommended in, in everywhere, that you let your food come to room temperature. You don't have to do that. It's just with the bigger grill like this, especially this one for the members mark or bakers and chefs at Sam's Club, it's, it's more than, than 32, 33 inches. The wider you go, I recommend locking it down. It doesn't hurt it, especially once you start cooking on this, you're gonna see that you're never gonna go back. This is so much fun to cook on. So therefore, lock it down and enjoy the griddle top. So we custom make griddle tops. We have the products for you. That's what Griddle Master is all about. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope I've answered some of the questions that you may have. Uh, there is a lot of you out there. There's a lot of tailgaters. There's a lot of uh, firemen. Uh, there are the, the, um, the kids out at the park that the parents are doing the fundraisers and stuff. A lot of people have this big grill, the 8-burner event grill from Sam's Club because it's so inexpensive. So all you have to do is add a Griddle Master griddle top and you too will be able to serve hot dogs, hamburgers. Uh, your, the grill's gonna last indefinitely, like I said. Pizza, uh, chicken wings, you name it, fried rice. You could do the Benihana. You, if you think it, you could do it on, on the griddle top. So that is why I wanted to do this video for you. So that way you know what Griddle Master's all about and uh, all the uses that you can have for cooking on a griddle top. So, Griddle Master Joe, go to griddlemaster.com. Please like us on Facebook, uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, and uh, look for more videos. I'm going to be doing a incredible meal uh, here right after after we stop filming this. So, thanks for watching, and go visit us at griddlemaster.com.